Hey, Stephen from techmaker.tv here. This is part two of building a blockchain from scratch with Ruby. So in part one, we looked at setting up a simple bank class. And the bank essentially has a few basic functions. We have transfer, we have balance, balance of, something to that effect, and then just creating accounts. So this episode, we're gonna dive into setting up a client library so that users can actually talk to the bank. In the beginning, it's gonna be really simple. We're gonna use TDD and just set up all the methods. And then we're gonna separate it so that they talk over HTTP. So in, a, in, a, in effect, the bank is gonna look like an API. And so what that's gonna show us is that we really need authentication so that people can't steal each other's money. Um, and that's gonna lead us into using cryptography to essentially um, make it authenticated. Um, so that will either be at the end of this episode or potentially in part three, depending on how long this episode gets. So with that, let's go ahead and dive in. All right, so I'm back in my terminal. And as you remember, we have our episode one directory in here. And I'm gonna go ahead and copy this into a new directory, episode two. So now we have episode two, so let's change into that. And we have our bank and our spec, and if we run our spec, we should be all green. Okay, so let's go ahead and open this directory up. And this is gonna take a second, so I'm gonna cut the video. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and create a new file in the spec directory, and I'm gonna call it client spec. Okay, so in here we need to require our spec helper, save that. I don't want to open that. I think that's going to do something bad. Okay, nothing. Okay, so let me just our spec now. Okay, so now we're going to do our spec dot describe client do. And, and then now if we run our spec again, we should get an issue. Okay, so we don't have a client, so I'm going to, uh, in actual fact, I uh, skipped a step here. Doesn't matter, uh, well it doesn't matter, but in order to save time, I'm gonna require relative uh, dot dot slash client dot rb, run the test again. Should tell me I don't have that file. Okay, don't have episode two client. So in episode two, I'm gonna create another new file, client.rb, run the test again. Now I should get an issue with not having a class. Okay, uninitialize constant, client. Okay, so now we've got our file set up. So in here, let's just say client, save it, run the test, which should be green. Okay, okay, so Back in our client spec, let's write our first test. So the first thing we should be able to do is say it can uh, create a bank account. And in here, um, let's think about what this should do, right? So we can say um, bank, let's actually open up our bank class so we remember what that looks like. So we have bank, owner adders, um, Total supply, balances, let's open up our bank spec. Let's see how we initialize all this stuff. I'm gonna rearrange my little tabs here. Maybe, maybe I have to go. That's just lagging, that's cool. So I'm gonna put my client spec here, hopefully. And then we have bank spec, okay, cool. So I'm gonna grab this, jump in my client spec and use the same bank. So what I actually want to do in here is say uh, client equals client dot new, and I'm going to give it a bank. Let's just give it the bank, and then say uh, client dot create account. Actually, let's just run our tests. Kind of stick to good TDD practices here. So um, we've got a initialize method missing, and we need to give it an argument of a bank. And I should get a screen again. Okay, so in here, we'll say client dot 
create account. And let's just say for now, um, Steven, and then we'll check the balance. Um, get balance. Actually, I'm getting ahead of myself again here. Let's check that because that's going to blow up. Okay, so I need also a uh, create account, a username. Okay, green again. Now let's do expect client.getBalance uh, to equal zero. Okay, so let's run this. And that may need to change a little bit. I'm not 100% sure. Uh, we can think that through a little bit. We may do it. Just fair warning, uh, a lot of things are going to change the further we get down there through this series. So if I have to come back and sort of reinvent some of this, don't be totally shocked. Um, okay, so get balance, undefined method. Okay, we can fix that. Okay, now we should... Uh, got nil. We can actually... This is sort of cheating. But we can actually get everything green again by doing this. But now we actually need to implement some real behavior in here. So let's kind of just take some steps toward connecting this to the actual bank and let's see what happens. Okay, to start, let's jump back into our client class because now we have green tests. So in principle, we can change everything and as long as things stay green, we're okay. So if I say add bank, equals bank, okay, add a reader, bank, and then if I fill this in and I say um, create account, um, bank.create account, username, and then we may actually, okay, so to get this to work as is, I need to do something kind of weird. I need to say at username equals username. And then I'm going to say bank.get, let's now say balance of username. And I need an at username. Okay, let's see what this does. Okay, so I'm still green, so that works, and we're talking to the actual bank now. Um, I do want to change something, though, because so this is kind of a strange dynamic. So the idea here is that a client connecting to the bank is a user. And I can foresee that this is not going to work exactly like this in the future. Um, but what I think I want to do now is actually say uh, client equals client.new bank and then uh, let's say Steven as the username okay and that's just gonna be what that is and hmm so that's kinda tricky so what I'm thinking about doing is actually saying okay so we have Username at username is username. We get username up here, and then this is just going to call balance of username. Okay, I got nil. Okay, so I broke something. Oh, okay. So that makes sense. So what we actually need to do is say, uh, at the tail end here, we're going to say uh, create account username on the bank. No, we don't need to do that because we have the method defined here, so that should work. Okay, but that's actually kind of a problem, right? Because, so now this is showing us some stuff. So what we need to do is say, because uh, if I were to if I were to do client not new bank Jim Bob, that's uh, going to well let's see what it does. So let's actually 
um, Jim Bob. So now it's telling me, this is sort of telling me that, okay, Jim Bob, who is the owner of the bank and is supposed to have a total supply, is getting overwritten. So that's a problem, and we need to fix that. So let's say it creates, so we'll say it creates a new bank account if one does not exist. Okay. So that's actually going to just pass as is. And then I'm going to say it does not create a new bank account if one does exist. So Jim Bob, and we want this balance to be 1 million. And this should fail and tell me it expected a million and got zero. So, okay, we can solve this problem here, and we won't in the end. Um, we're gonna say find or create account, and we'll, we're, we're gonna do this here for now, and then we're gonna fix the problem, because this is the wrong place to put this. But what we're gonna do is say, if, uh, get balance dot mil else okay and here actually in fact we just need to do this unless get bank balance dot mil no if yeah sorry getting myself screwed up Okay, so we run this, we should be green. Okay, cool. But the problem is, this is actually the wrong place to put this. Uh, because what this is doing is in our bank, it's leaving the door open for the client to uh, screw it up. Because keep in mind, um, the bank is ultimately gonna be receiving this information over an API. And so if we leave that API open, anybody could write any code that interacts with it however is possible. So we're writing a nice client library here, but that's leaving the bank wide open for attack if we uh, don't fix this on the bank side. So what I'm going to do is actually come in here and say in the bank spec, it does not overwrite And then what we're going to do is just say bank.createAccount. And then we're just going to say expect uh, bank.balance of Jim Bob to equal a million. And we'll run this, and this should fail. Okay, so now we need to go into our bank class and say if add balances of dot nil and actually what we can do is just say return unless balances dot nil so that's what you call a guard statement and the idea is basically like uh, don't do anything if this thing's not nil like don't let people create accounts you know that they shouldn't be able to create Okay, so now we're passing on the bank side. So now what's cool is in our client, uh, we can actually just undo, and we don't need any logic whatsoever. And we can just say create account username, and we're still gonna be green because the logic is actually on the bank side. Now we may want to think about the naming on this end because it isn't, in, it isn't, uh, you know, actually creating an account, it's that's kind of improperly named. And um, you know what, actually, uh, create account, find or create is probably that's probably the right name, realistically. Find or create account for a username. That's probably, probably
probably right. Hmm, I broke something. Oh, right. Um, so create account. That needs to stay the same. Yeah, that's interesting. So for now, we'll leave it alone on the bank. Um, I'm fine with the create account basically doing nothing and um, like that. And then the client basically, you know, has the ability to run it, try it, and you know, if nothing happens, nothing happens. So the last bit we need to do is actually implement transfer. So what I'm going to do here is say uh, it can execute transfers. That should be fine. And then we'll say a uh, client. Let's just grab that one. And we'll call that client one. And then we'll say um, client one dot transfer. Uh, let's say to Steven. And then the amount will be like 4,500. And then we'll say client two equals client dot new bank Steven. And actually, I'm going to kick that above so we don't get into any issues about the account not existing. And and that's actually an interesting point here would be like maybe if you transfer to an account that doesn't exist. Uh, we actually just send it there. And then if somebody ever claims that account, they have a balance to start with. That could be kind of interesting. I suspect that's how that would work on Ethereum. If someone sent you know, Ether to the wrong address and then by some crazy circumstance, somebody gets that address in the future, they would actually have a balance. Getting that address, I think, would be highly unlikely, but um, probably not totally impossible. At any rate, um, We'll do this for now. Client one dot transfer Steven, and then client two. So we'll expect client two dot get balance dot two equal forty five hundred, and we'll expect client one dot get balance to equal. Uh, gosh, I'm gonna do math again in my head. Five five zero zero. That's too many. Hold on. Nope, I did that wrong. That should be a five. I think. Forty five hundred. That should be a zero. Okay. Here we go. So I definitely skipped some steps. So this is gonna fail out uh, pretty early, and we'll have to kind of follow the failures. So undefined method transfer. Okay. Def transfer. We'll say bank dot transfer, and then the from is username. The two is we'll have to give it a two and an amount, right? So essentially, what's happening here is a client is being initialized with a pointer to a bank and then a username, and then that username, like the user, owns that client while it's running, essentially. Okay, so all green. So I'm actually out of time and I'm gonna have to end this episode here. So one thing I'm gonna think about is what to do next exactly because there's two things that are giant problems right now. The one thing is that this code is written in such a way that really the, the client and the bank have to be running on the same system in order to communicate with each other. So what we're going to do uh, to solve that problem is make the bank into a server-based application that can be communicated with via API endpoints. And we're going to do that with Sinatra to make that like kind of a lightweight server that's running. And the second thing is there's no authentication, so anybody can log in as Jim Bob and have a million dollars. So I'm going to take a little bit of time and research what I think might be the best next step, but it's going to be one of those two problems that we're going to solve next, and then we'll follow with the other one. Uh, once we have those two things knocked out, which is going to take another two to three episodes, I imagine, 
like I said, this is going to be a pretty long series. Once we have those knocked out, we're going to look into uh, gossip protocols and how um, really the key problem that blockchain is dealing with is how do you do this in a decentralized way? So uh, we still have a little bit to go before we even get to that, um, but we're going to have a pretty interesting system running after another two or three episodes. Um, and beyond that, it's going to get much more interesting and much more difficult. So stay tuned for those, and I'll talk to you next time.